Everything is better when it's moist. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers, and... Oh, it's kind of blurred out, but we got a water block for the 3080. So this is, um, Alpha Cool Ice Block, whatever. It's, it's for the Reference Edition 3080. But, um, apparently the EVGA XC3 is a extended PCB reference model. So on the actual website, it says that when you install the water block, it comes to like here and then the rest of the PCB just hangs out. But it says it works. Let's find out. All right, so if you are a person that cares about aesthetics, I probably would not get this model for your XC3. Just because, I mean, or, or for resale value. I mean, it, it looks gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but I mean, check this out, right? Yeah, like, like who, who's gonna buy a card with this sticking out? But for me, I couldn't give a rat's ass. As long as it works, it works. The one thing, I mean, this was, this was um, quite a bit cheaper than the EK model, but the EK wasn't out yet though. But I swear, I, I just got what I could get, right? But the, the reason this one is so much cheaper is because these parts here aren't, like there's no, there's no cold plate here, like connecting the VRMs to the rest of it. So it's literally the VRAM modules go on the outside, core in the middle, VRM here, VRM here, and then it's all connected through the channels over here. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of a, a way for them to cut costs. I wouldn't say it affects performance at all, probably not, but this is definitely cheaping out a little bit and using the acrylic to channel the water. Um, but I mean, I'm sure it's fine. Let's let's take it apart and find out. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it apart and I'm going to use Cryonaut with the first iteration of this mod. I'm I'm I'm, not, I'm also so let me let me start from the beginning here. I'm going to use Cryonaut and I'm going to use the card exactly the way it is. And then I'm going to benchmark it so that we can see exactly what the difference is with the water block alone. And then afterwards I'll probably do liquid metal and then I'll shunt I'll double shunt it after to get even more power limit out of it. Um, but I'm not gonna do that today, I'll save that for another video. Today we're just gonna be installing the actual water block itself. Um, let's take this bad boy off. Oh, I missed one, of course I did. Never force it. If it doesn't come off, double check your work. All right. Uh, all right, you can see the little, um, the mini shunts that I had to glue here. You see how I connected just two wires to the end of a resistor and then glued it onto the smaller shunt? I don't know if you actually need these three shunts, these smaller ones. Um, apparently you don't need these ones, but me doing it this way didn't harm it in any way, so I'm gonna leave them. But... Uh, yeah, you can see how I had to shunt the the PCI Express one as well. But yeah, anyway. We will save the double shunting for next time. Maybe for the double shunt, I'll just double shunt the PCI Express connectors. I mean, sorry, the 8-pin the connectors and not the PCI Express one. Might be good enough. Uh, I haven't taken this thing apart in a while, but... I hope the water block fits. Should fit. Okay. I'll be back. I'm gonna wiggle this for a while. Okay, so if you are going to be doing this on the EVGA XC3 model, whatever foam pads that they use on this model, it, it, 
um, it pretty much destroys itself when you take it off. So if you are going to be doing this and you're taking the thermal pads off the XC3, make sure that you measure them and keep track of how thick the thermal pads are if you ever want to use the air cooler again so you can order some other ones because this shit's, yeah, it's, um, this is not reusable after disassembly, that's for sure. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. Th these pads go over the VRMs, but they don't actually actively cool the chokes. I don't like that. I like to have my chokes cooled. I know it's not necessary, but... Uh, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm just a guy that likes to cool his chokes. But, I mean, alright, whatever. I just want to point that out. If... If the $40 of savings is worth it to you, then yeah, but the EK block does cool the chokes. Alright, this is what the block looks like with it in place. That's not too bad. That's... That's not the worst. I mean... It, I mean, if you have it like this in your case, if it's not vertical mounted, that doesn't look too bad at all, to be honest. But uh, let's get the back plate on here. Alright, this is actually a really nice back plate, but I don't think that I'm going to go with this. It... Yeah, it looks like it, it kind of messes with the LED a little bit. I'm going to try and put... This is a really nice back plate though if you had a founder or a reference edition, but I'm going to try and go with the stock back plate instead here. Let's see if this fits. Yup, looks like it fits no problem. The... The stock screws, I mean, I guess except for these ones, but the, the stock screws, oh, wait a minute. Okay, well, these ones fit. Yeah. Man. So, long story short, it does work but it's a little too janky for my liking. I, I can't recommend anybody do this. Um, e even if you're an advanced user, like this connector right here, this screw here actually doesn't line up with the nut on the actual water block. So I had to take it off and undo the I had to undo the leg on the water block on the corner, and then I had to use a nut to get the back plate down on this side. Um, these three lined up fine. They worked well. This one did not line up. And these four on the end here... I mean, they don't do anything at all. They don't, like... So I'm gonna, I'm gonna order maybe four screws and nuts just for the end. Just, just to have it tight on the end here, but... Um, other than that, I mean, oh yeah, and one more thing, the, the thermal pads that come with the Alpha Cool backplate are not thick enough to, to be compatible with this backplate. It's, it's like, they don't even touch the, the PCB. So if you are going to use them, you have to double up on them, or you have to add a one millimeter on top of the ones that you get. So that was pretty useless, but... Everything else seems to be okay, but yeah, I would not even though it says the even though it says the the website says it's compatible and it works, it's a little too janky for me for to recommend this to anybody. I would wait for the actual XC3 model if you're going to do this. But that doesn't mean that we can't test thermals. So let's go do a quick let's go do a quick benchmark and see what kind of thermals we get on this. I'll be back. I mean, it, it really wouldn't be difficult for Alpha Cool to just extend the PCB a little bit. Don't even include a backplate. Just use this backplate and then just provide some screws. And it, it would cost them the same and it would just... It would look so much cleaner and it would have a better product, you know what I mean? But, alright. Anyway. Alright. Engage. Ooh, that looks nice. Huh. Look at that. That actually looks really nice. Alright. Kinda kinda wish I uh 
vertical mounted it. Still. All right, I am, I am impressed with the RGB. The RGB has sold me. Huh. Okay. We are running. I'm gonna leave the clock at zero, 1000 RAM. I just wanna see, I wanna see what it'll boost to by itself out of the box with the power mod. Let's see. All right, got the overlay up here. Temps are nice and cool. I'm excited. If these things are anything like Vega, they're going to be loving being underwater. Um, oh, it's boosting to 2055 out of the box. At zero. What's the voltage? Oh, 1094. Okay, so let's do a benchmark. So obviously it doesn't know it's under load, so it's it's volting itself to 1094, right? But coupled, so power mod coupled with the water block, it's locking itself to 2055. Yeah, 2055, 36C. Wow, that's good. Good job, Alpha Cool, man. 35. Oh, this is sick. Oh, let's crank this bitch up. Oh, man. Okay, let's crank this up. Hang on. We're, we're cranking this. Let's try... Let's try 2200. Forget it. All right. What was that? 155? So let's, let's go plus 100. Plus 100. Apply. Let's go back in. Twenty-one forty-five. It's at one point one mil or eleven hundred millivolts right now. Twenty-one seems fine. Twenty-one forty-five. Thirty-eight C now. Let's go plus a hundred and fifty. Plus one fifty. Apply. I'd be really surprised if this was stable. 2190. It's not crashing. Holy shit. Oh. Oh. Can we break 2200? Let's give it a shot. One more bin. Plus, we're going to go plus 160. Apply. Come on, you can do this. You can do it. Come on! Yeah! 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 Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Okay, 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 hang on. Oh, man, this is sick. I love this shit. Come on, you can do this. Come on, you can do this. So it's at, yeah, 1100 millivolts. It's tapped out. It, the voltage can't go any higher. 38C still. She runs cool. She runs cool. They just... The, 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 the power limits and the, and the stock coolers are just not good enough for these things. 2205. 38C. My radiators aren't even getting really that... that uh, they aren't even getting warm. At all. It's actually not, it's, it's not even that, it's not even that an inefficient node. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm saying the wrong words. It's not that inefficient of a node. It's like, it just, it becomes inefficient, it looks like, as it gets hotter. But if you keep it cool, it seems to be pretty power efficient. I'm only at 60% power right now. This is impressive. 39C. Very impressive. 
Oh, it crashed. Ah, oh. not bad, not bad. Um, I bet you if I use liquid metal and maybe soldered some more capacitors on there, I could probably get it to like twenty two fifty. Like, like we have a lot. We have a lot of content to go through, my friends. A lot of tweaking. So. I missed my stream on Tuesday. I thought it was Monday for some reason. And then it was like 8 p.m. And then I was like, holy shit, I missed my stream. But I'm going to make up for it tonight, uh, 6 p.m. We're going to do, we're going to go nuts with the water cooled 3080. And we're going to tweak it and see what it can do. Uh, see how, see how, what kind of benchmark numbers we can get out of it. Uh, join us tonight. If you want access to the Discord, you must subscribe below on my website or you have to go on Twitch and I can give you a code over there if you're not a jackass. Otherwise, sorry guys, the Discord is locked down. I, I can't let fanboys in there anymore. We have too, we have too good of a thing going on to, to pollute the waters with a shit fest. You know what I mean? I gotta be really selective. But yeah, this, this seems to cap out right around where Turing capped out underwater. Um, it can't go as far on air, but it, it seems to... Like, the 8 nanometer node, when kept cool, seems to be okay. It's okay. Like, it's not... The, the fact that it hits 2200 megahertz means it's kind of the same as Turing. And I haven't used liquid metal yet, so that's okay. It's okay. Like, it's not... Yeah, you just just put a water block on it. That's that's pretty much the uh, the answer to Ampere right now. Anyway, see you guys tonight. Um, Twitch, six p.m. And if you're not coming by, then uh, hey, thank you for watching the video. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like and share and comment. And if what did you guys think of the water block on Ampere? I mean, I, I, I learned, I learned a hell of a lot of more, I learned a lot more about Ampere in the five seconds of having that water block than I did dicking around with all that air cooling. So, yeah, hope you learned some, and I will see you guys either tonight or in the next one. Talk to you later.